On 16-bit versions, there are two handy tools on the left of the control panel to help isolate individual elements of complex structures. The first surrounds the boundaries of the current cuboid with a flashing box. The other makes everything except the chosen section vanish. Now we'll add something with more detail. We'll create a small building at the end of the tunnel and then a door. Once again, we create a cube and lower this into position. For the roof of our house, we use a new shape, a pyramid. We leave this in mid-air while we stretch the cube to adjust its dimensions. To simplify making the pyramid the same size as the cube, we change our viewpoint to look straight down at the top of it. When we've stretched the pyramid sufficiently, we center its apex with the point commands found at the extreme left of the edit panel. We experiment until the roof is symmetrical. Clicking on mode takes us back to our original viewpoint. Now it's time to create yet another shape. As well as the three-dimensional objects we've already encountered, there are two-dimensional ones which can be used to add detail to buildings. In this instance, we'll use the rectangle to make a door. To make it look more like a hole in the wall, We'll color it black and then slide it into position. However, when we try to walk through it, we collide with the wall. At the moment, it's just a flat black shape on a solid cube. To allow us to define the inside of the house, we now need to create a new area. Selecting Create Area from the menu bar takes us back to an empty landscape, just like the one we started with. However, note that the status bar now tells us we're in area two. This time, instead of placing buildings in an open landscape, we want to enclose the area with four walls. On all versions except the PC, we can use the global command, which contains commonly used objects. On a PC, we'd simply create each wall from scratch using cubes. If it feels too claustrophobic as we look round the new area, we can expand the size of our room. There's no need to match the inside of a building to its outside. In fact, we could create a grand chamber inside a small hut. We now have two areas, but no way to move between them other than to use the area command on the toolkit's menu bar. So let's go outside again. Each area can have several entrances. 
we have to select which one we'll use when we move from a different area. We now need to tell the program to move into the new area when we collide with the door. 3D construction kit's conditions are one of its most powerful features. They let us tell the program how to respond to the user's actions. We'll establish a condition that takes us from area 1 to area 2 if we collide with the door. Though it may look a little complex at first, the conditional language is really very logical, as you'll discover from the manual. Now let's try to walk through the door. This time, we're inside the room. Freescape users can also interact with environments by shooting, so let's make the top of the tunnel vanish if we shoot it. On 8-bit machines, the conditional language looks a little different, but works in essentially the same fashion. This technique could be used to reveal a secret passage in an adventure game, for example. On 16-bit versions, we can also make features move using the animation command. When you have finished designing your game, it is time to test it and add the final touches. Now we can replace the development control panel with a more suitable border. We can use any of those provided or create our own with an art package. Once we've chosen the screen, we have to tell the program the size of the view window. We draw this out until it fills the empty space. The final stage is to let the program know where the user's movement keys are. We return to the main screen and select controls from the general menu. We click on each direction in turn. Returning to the border, we then draw a box around the right arrow. Clicking on this now moves us right, and we can still shoot the roof and wall of the tunnel. That's just a brief introduction to the 3D construction kit. For more details, read the manual, experiment with the kit game which we've included, but most of all, use your imagination and have fun.